Good morning, guys. Welcome back to The Breakfast Club. Uh, we hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Did you get your lasagna? I didn't, and I was very <gasps> disappointed. Not only did I not get my lasagna, I didn't even get my flapper pie. Oh, no! And Mother was... She, she just disappointed me, so I just... I, I, don't, <laughs> I was... I was thankful for nothing. Oh, <laughs> no, we had an amazing meal. She yeah. made an entire turkey and like oh, nice. way too much food. I didn't get my lasagna, which is fine. She's, our, she's promised me to make me uh, personal lasagnas. <laughs> and I'm making this promise for her now. Oh, okay. So she's going to make me personal lasagnas. Right on. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, don't, I, had, I had a couple good meals, actually. So that was... A couple good meals? I did, yeah. I had two Thanksgiving meals. Uh, one with my family and then one with my friends and her my friend and her family so not only did i get to eat pumpkin pie <gasps> oh which, god controversial yeah what did you do i wanted to be like i was hey let's get a reaction out of people <laughs> so if you don't follow us on social media you won't have seen this if you do you probably did see this but tyson thought he would just he likes to like stir the pot every once in a while and... was my statement is not i made a uh, I made a statement, and it wasn't a rude statement. Pumpkin pie ain't that great. Changed my mind. It, <laughs> but the funny part is, it's not even your opinion. It's not like that's how you feel. No, I... Because you said yeah. last week I, that you I, like pumpkin I pie. I quite enjoy pumpkin yeah. pie. <laughs> it was just... What's the most controversial <laughs> thing that we can... And yeah, that post... <laughs> The post took off. Like, it is by far going to be our most engaging post for last week. So. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, uh, if you didn't see it, it'll be showing up in next week's Coffee Break Collection newsletter as yeah. our hot topic. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, what, what would make people think that, you know, what's the most controversial thing you can think of this weekend? Pumpkin pie. <laughs> that out of 2020. I feel like just everything happening. Pumpkin in general. Pumpkin in general. Is the problem. <laughs> Like pumpkin pie, you only get it, it seems like you only ever get it in the fall. That was one guy's point though. If it was so great, why do we only eat it at Thanksgiving? In that tone is how you had to read it <laughs> <No>. too. <laughs> that's, that's how I read it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I would eat it all year long. If I, I don't make pies myself though. There was a lot of so. comments that made very good points. Oh yeah. Like uh, pecan or pecan, depending on however Ooh, you want to say it. Like way better, too. way better pie. I'd rather take that. But pumpkin yeah. pie is still good. Don't get me wrong. I had a lot of pumpkin pie on the weekend. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It's just to do with fall harvest and, you know. No pumpkins. one's harvesting pumpkins. Well, some people are. Name one farmer. Well, I don't know what your definition of harvest is, but there are people <laughs> that grow pumpkins. Yes. Like the pumpkin patch. Unfortunately, they couldn't be open this year, I... so they're selling all their pumpkins. <laughs> okay. They can't <laughs> open. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, anyways, <laughs> yeah, pumpkin pie, very controversial. I'm glad to see everyone was very engaging. Uh, there was yes. some comments that were hidden because, wow, rude, but... Uh, yeah, we don't, there's no need, <laughs> there's no need for that. <laughs> they were never shown anyway, because when you use foul and pro, like, yeah. profanity, we it doesn't filters. show up. We like to keep things respectable. Yeah, well, we try our best. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on from that topic, it's taken up far too much time already. <laughs> Um, what do you want to talk about first? What's been shaken? Uh, so last week would just went, went bling. And this um, week is too. I mean, short week. It's went bling. <laughs> uh, what did we, we got in. So the seasons are changing, which is a great song. Dream Theater, yeah. Change of Seasons. Yeah, it's yeah. like 16 minutes long. Great show. Uh, <laughs> definitely look that one up. <laughs> uh, where was my brain going this morning? Uh, That's what happened. <laughs> hunting season is upon us yes, right away here. So a lot of guys are already out waterfowling, uh, duck hunting, everything like that. Rifle season is coming up for whitetail in our area, along with um, if you're drawn for moose and elk in Manitoba. Those are coming up in yeah. the upcoming months, and a lot of guys are already out in archery. So. Yep. Saw mm. a moose, actually, as a tangent. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> on my drive home from uh, out by Ruston on Monday. There is actually quite a few... Uh, it was it quite a few a big, moose in the like the, yeah. the southern most western it's region of Manitoba. Definitely become more like heavily populated yeah. in the last uh, like ten years. Yes, definitely. Uh, but yeah, no, just a smaller one sauntering, taking his <laughs> sweet time to get across the road. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that after. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not not breakfast club appropriate. <laughs> so yeah, uh, season's kind of coming into uh, coming into full swing here right away. So 
we have seen a lot of guys coming into the showroom, picking up ammo, getting their rifle sighted in, picking up a new yep. hunting rifle. You know, the old Remington doesn't quite shoot straight from last year, so it's time to upgrade. There are tons of options now. My gun was lying in a snowbank, and yeah. I didn't clean it, and <laughs> that was not very happy. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many more options uh, from uh, the old like Remington Savage or Winchester now. You have, oh yeah, everyone makes a bolt action hunting rifle. So where do you start? We have uh, a selection of what you would call more, not exotic, because they're not, they're far from exotic, but they're, they're newer models that really take everything that of, of yesteryear and kind of modernize it and make it nice. Obviously synthetic stocks and yep. carbon fiber is gonna be way more prevalent now than ever. Yeah. Uh, so, Tika on top there. I don't know if you want to get into this right away. Let's get into yeah, this. Yeah, we'll get into this. So, Look at these rifles. They're beautiful. All right. The first one we got is a Tika T3X Lite. And now this guy, you probably can't tell from the video, but I'll put a close-up of it in there. Um, it has a rough text stock on it, among some other features that Tyson's going to talk about. But I missed that when I was first looking at yeah. it. So, so rough text stock, which is a texturized, it's still a T3X stock, so you can still change out the palm swell. You can put it on the forend if you want. Like, you can switch out the forend if you want to. So that's still all. Uh, functional, but you have the enlarged bolt knob, huh? uh, and you also have the spiral uh, spiral fluted bolt, which is really nice because the the surface contact of your bolt to your receiver has been drastically minim uh, minimized. Oh, okay, never thought uh, of it in that aspect. That's exactly that's why they do why it. They do that. <laughs> yeah. So dirt, debris, and especially in our area, ice, snow, yeah. <laughs> yes. won't stop you from. You won't have a, a seized bolt. Okay. So big bolt knob, huh? uh, spiral bolt. <laughs> You can smash her up even if it's you know covered in ice, frozen up, uh, snowing real bad on you. So that is a super nice feature. Still has detachable magazines. Still has a great trigger. You have a fluted threaded barrel on there too, which is nice. You're gonna minimize weight. You're gonna have more surface area for cooling, which kind of defeats the purpose if it's the, you know right. the middle of winter in Manitoba. Don't really need to cool my barrel anymore. It's already but, cold. You know. <laughs> but it does cut down on weight. Um, so, so we have that one here in stock in 308. Yes, and um, actually a couple other calibers oh, there, as well. Okay, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. All right. Well. I think we said it last week. We are like the home of Tika. We got a lot of them. There was a stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you go look at all the boxes yeah. in the warehouse. It's Tika. <laughs> um, that guy is not bad actually coming in at about 1440. Yeah. So, so, you know, Remington 700s and your plain Jane SPS model is right that $900 mark. So yep. you're getting a lot of features out of this rough tech. That and you're getting a Tika, which is really cool anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, next up, we have the Benelli Lupo, Lupo bolt action. Yeah. So, a couple features of the Lupo. Uh, it is a newer model for 2020, 2019, 2020. Okay. So, newer one from Benelli because obviously, if anyone's familiar with Benelli, they have never really historically done bolt action firearms. I do think we we talked about this a couple episodes ago, yeah. but I'm not. More fo I think we have, yeah. yeah. More focused on the shotgun market, not so much the rifle market. They they did have a couple semi-autos because they reused that gas system that we talked right. about last week. Yeah. But with the Lupo, your bolt action, very unique bolt style and pattern on it as well. We'll get a nice close-up of that. And again, a very <laughs> Benelli-ish magazine. They don't oh, like yes. boxes. They, they always have to like... Ergonomical. No, it's not. It's all curvy. <laughs> so <laughs> We've been through this. <laughs> I know where to put my hands. <laughs> so you got 19, 13 rails on the top of the receiver. Lightweight, uh, lightweight profile barrel. Not this big varmint barrel by any means. You are threaded as well. And it does have a recoil dampening system within the buttstock. So okay. uh, there's a little bit of information on that in the link below. But it is a... That it's guy a, looks like it's a bit of a longer barrel. It is a bit other. of a longer barrel because that is a 300 Win Mag, so oh, it is okay. going to be a Magnum cartridge, so there a little bit longer. Uh, retailing at just over 2000 Yeah, a little over a little over two. A little bit more expensive than, say, a Tika, but you are getting Benelli. The ergonomics, the design, and everything about it is a little bit more, we'll say, classy. Yeah, we'll have to take a look. Uh, I'm sure in the specs we have the weights of them, but... Yeah, the, uh, the 300 is going to be a little bit more than that rough tech just because uh, it's got a, a decent barrel profile on it for being a Magnum and it's a little bit longer, so add a little bit more weight to it. There you go. Uh, next up we have the Seiko S20 Hunter, which we have talked about quite a bit, but we actually have one here to show you today. Scum -am. Beautiful rifles, love them. Yeah. Seiko actions. Uh, you have 1913 built into the receiver. You have a detachable box magazine that they did. It's not near as nice as like a like an 85 XL magazine or anything like okay. that, where it's like steel body and everything. 
It is a Palmer Body magazine. It's still a nice mag. It's not uh, bad by any means. The uh, A couple of us were talking about this earlier today. I'm not a huge fan, and a couple other guys aren't either, of thumbhole stocks. It really pigeonholes you into how you can grip right. a rifle. Yeah. But that's super comfortable. <laughs> and it's really narrow. It is. That's something that, like, finding the pictures online, you obviously don't see, and I hadn't picked one up yet, but... When it's you shouldered skinny. it, I was looking at the butt stock from the back, yeah. and it is very thin. It, it is a thin, very ergonomic, very nice and comfortable butt stock. It is a very vertical grip on it. So it's not like your, uh, call it traditional thumb hole, where you actually right. have to put your thumb in the hole, right? It's a, it's a pistol grip style yeah. thumb hole grip. Uh, it does allow you to do your thumb over or to the side grip as well. The bolt action knurled knob. It's a Seiko, so it's buttery. 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 <laughs> I was watching something the other day, completely different industry, not related to ours whatsoever, but the person also used the word butter to describe something. <laughs> Everyone can relate food. <laughs> uh, Seiko S20, you have QD slots all over it, along with uh, traditional sling studs. Fluted barrel, threaded, just like the uh, rough deck above. They're an awesome rifle, and they got always got great triggers, great accuracy. Yeah, I think we got them in stock in 308 and 65 Creedmoor, um, retailing Kidding. for 1800, just just over 1800. And uh, in the other videos that we've showed you on this rifle, they have a Hunter model, and they have what's the other one called? I'm drawing a blank right now. The other model, I'm drawing a blank. Precision. Precision model. Precision that's model, the, uh, and S20 so essentially precision. you can get just um, a different butt stock that's yeah. interchangeable with this that makes it more in line for yeah. long range shooting. Right. Uh, right, so you get a more precision oriented. It's, it's not adjustable. A yeah, it's yeah. a it's way more adjustable. You have adjustable butt, cheek, everything right. like that. So it's a little bit nicer if you are going to be stationary. This one is nice for actually movement. Move. Yep. yep, you're doing a quick follow up shot on a tree line, anything like that. It is nice. It it comes up really nice. So okay. Um, and last but not least, we have a bit of a build to show you, um, and also a line. So a couple episodes ago, we talked about like the Merkel Helixes. Yes. We don't talk about them very often, but we should. Uh, this is kind of another another line like that. It the is. The Hanel Jaeger model. Yes, Jaeger 9 and 10s. Yeah, so this is a Jaeger, is it a 9? It's a 10. 10. 10, 10 varmint. Varmint in 223. Yeah. Uh, we got a Night Force scope on it. Skaboom. And yeah. But so everyone's gonna say, you guys do Night Force or McGird? We don't. Yeah. But we do get Night Forces in once in, in once in a while. Yeah, we, we do have random odds and sods of them. So you have a really nice package, Night Force rings and optic on there. Uh, you, it's the Night Force 3 to, um, three to 10, I believe. Sorry, yes. I didn't Oh, I have that up. written down. Uh, 3 to 10 by 42. And there it are. is a Varmint Sport Pro. Ooh, wow. Varmint Sport Pro. Yeah. I'm not, I need to really brush up on my Night Force because I know, like, I know very little of them because we don't deal in them, right? Yeah. So I have very limited experience in the Night Force. But the, the Hanel Jaeger is a very nice rifle. This specific setup is uh, incredibly heavy. <laughs> it is a Varmint style, yeah. so you're heavy having barrel. a heavy barrel, weighted stock, adjustable cheek piece on the stock. You have a, a lar enlarged bolt knob. Yeah. Uh, and attachable magazine on a paddle, so it, overall and threaded. So if you did want to put a breaker or anything on that suppressor, if you're in Europe, yeah, which where is you can. where you can, which is crazy, because all of these firearms are all uh, European in design, and they are all threaded, threaded for suppressors. Because in a lot of European countries, you're allowed to have suppressors. Yeah, but not here. No. No, yeah. sir. Nope. Anyways. That's, uh, I don't want to get depressing. So yeah, it, it is a Wicked package. I think it's on special for... 2850. 2850. It's not bad. No. Nice little gun. It is a Wicked little 223. So. Yeah. And for anyone who is big into varmint hunting. Yes. Yeah. Well, season's coming up too. It is coming up. And I mean, there's uh, quite a few people in this area that... Yeah. Uh, I think last year, Mr. Browning knocked down 43 coyotes or something. Oh, wow. Something silly. So. Nice. Yeah, it was a lot. Okay. Uh, well, those are kind of what we wanted to show you. We did get a handful of other things come in uh, this last week as well. We got a handful of Browning shotguns. Yes. Um, a handful of Canuck shotguns. Yes. Um, <laughs> These also... are 12 gauge. They yes. go boom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you some details on here. Uh, Nightstick. We've talked about Nightstick a few episodes ago. Um, basically a new line of lighting products, we'll call them. You have stationary lights, you have work lights, uh, emergency lights, weapon lights. You've got all the different. Yeah. You got everything in there. Check those out if you haven't They'll already. They'll brighten your day. <laughs> they're, ah! quite, they're quite effective <laughs> and affordable. They are. They very are. 
You're the worst. <laughs> oh my god. It, I like we're supposed to do this when we like right when we got here. It is not right when we're we got only here. Only like a couple hours, a couple hours into the day, but it really just takes the focus. It does. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also got a handful of Glocks, uh, all 9 mils, G17s, Gen 4 and 5, and I believe a G48. Model, specific model. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch of Glocks in, a bunch of Glocks went out, a bunch of Glocks came in. Yeah. They're Glocks, a Glock is a Glock is a Glock. I'm not going over that big spiel again. No, we don't need to do that no. again. <laughs> um, and we also got Ruger PC Carbine yeah. takedown welcome, models. Welcome to the jungle. And you're going to put up that picture. I will put up that picture. Bam. Yes. These things are ballers. Yeah. And they are $954.99, so under 1000 bucks. Well, there you go. One other thing that we do have that we uh, did not mention in there is the 76239 upper receivers for the MCRs. Right. We talked about those last week, but they didn't hadn't quite made it onto the website yet. So yeah. now that they are there. They're there, ready for sale, $999. Uh, that is a complete upper receiver that drops on any 180 yeah. platform, as long as nothing oddball had been done to that platform like the weird pins right. things like that so if it attaches like a regular 180 it'll drop right on there you're no modifications required the only thing you you're just gonna need have a to new do magazine is take that little pin out if you're not running it on mcr because the mcr runs a rear takedown pin which is dead simple to remove it's yep. not like this big process so uh we should probably show ah you'll figure it out just bend it really hard and get it out of there don't do that <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> we'll see if we have time. Yeah, but they come with one magazine, chamber and 76239. You can burn up all that uh, dirty old surplus that you got lying around. Yep. Clean your gun afterwards, please. But, yeah. <laughs> At this time, only upper receivers are available for that caliber. Yes, no not complete, complete rifles, rifles. Still only making the 5.56 right. right now. So if you have a 180 platform already, you have an option to get a 76239. And if you don't have a 180 platform right now, you have the option of getting half of a <laughs> platform. <laughs> You need the lower, which right now we just don't have enough lowers to produce full rifles because all those lowers are being produced in 5.56. Five, yep. So we just had the uppers available, so wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to get them. There you go. Yeah. Other than that, okay. Type 97s. Still got oh. them in stock. Okay. 5.56, five, non-restricted, yeah. detachable AR magazine. And I said chamber 5.56, five, in stock. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all the checklist. Covered yeah. all the bases. Boom. In stock, 11.99. They are the least expensive non-restricted 5.56 detachable magazine platform right now uh, in semi-auto Yep. Uh, that you can get. We got a lot of those in stock, so check them out. And right we on. also have the M and M M10X. Have those made it online yet? If they It's Saturday, they better be. <laughs> and I better have a picture done then. You better. Because I don't think that I had one last time, last week when we talked about it. They're there. Okay. I'm guaranteeing. I guarantee. Well, whoever said that, I, don't, I have no idea. Okay. I guarantee they're we'll there. We'll make sure that they're there. That is a Tyson promise. Now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel pretty confident about that. This this Tyson promise. This specific Tyson promise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't learn. I don't learn. I, okay, I think that's everything. Um, we didn't get out to the range, by the way. No, um, and we aren't going to today. Well, no. I don't know if you had plans, but I can't no. fit that in today no uh so do we want to do like a montage of uh all of our previous shooting mishaps no oh we could do that. <laughs> like making my way downtown and it's just like oh no and you just have to bleep out all the swearing right well yeah there's which a was a lot actually not from me no <laughs> not me <laughs> yeah got a question for you okay i'm Where? a tourist <laughs> you would be <laughs> Favorite place you have traveled in Canada? Mm, ooh, oof, that's tough. Um, well, favorite place in Canada would be my family farm. Okay. Uh, because, uh, ah, it's boring though. Uh, no, that is my favorite place in the world. But uh, favorite place that I have traveled, I would have to say. Let's call it a destination. Right. So last year I went on a lovely trip out east. Yeah. Uh, I went through New Brunswick and everywhere. And then I went up to Quebec City. And I would nice. have to say uh, where I was in Quebec there, or just north of Quebec City. And in Quebec City was one of my favorite places. Cool. Uh, there's That's... some great people there that we went to visit. Yeah. We have lots of friends with us. Um, it's an area I have not been. It would be, I think it'd be interesting. It was beautiful. Yeah. And you know, not speaking French, it wasn't a wasn't a problem. Not um, for you. No, uh, everyone that we we talked to, we had obviously uh, some people from Quebec that made it a little bit easier that were fluent right. in French. But um, while we were there, everyone who didn't speak, sorry, for everyone 
who, of us that didn't speak French, everyone was very accommodating. And nice. no, no one was, uh, you know, just blank stare at us. <laughs> they all mostly spoke yeah. at least a little bit of English, Could so it wasn't by. a problem. Well, that's good. <laughs> Um, myself, I did a hiking trip last summer out towards Ontario, um, Bruce Peninsula area off Georgian Bay. You hiked there? Well, I didn't hike there. I wow. flew into Toronto, I believe it was. I don't remember for sure where I flew into. Why would you fly if you're going to hike? Because I, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> it was a beautiful area. Uh, we went up to like Tobermory and, uh, what was the other place? The Grotto and a couple other couple other very touristy places, but also we covered some trail that was, we were the only people on the trail, which was a little nerve wracking at times. Um, I wasn't planning to be the tour guide, but I ended up being the tour guide. I had a place so. that you've never been, so uh, yeah. That was interesting, but uh, definitely, yeah, really, really neat area, really beautiful. Uh, we stayed at this neat little bed and breakfast. It was at a place called like Colpoise Bay. Okay. And it was like an old three-story house, and my view out the window was like water and awesomeness. So I think that's going to be my favorite place That'll in Canada. Nice place. Yeah. All right. So. Well, you guys let us know if you've got some favorites. Uh, I'm always looking for, you know, places to travel to. Mine had great beer and poutine. Yeah, that would be. I remember <laughs> your pictures of the poutine. They were oh, pretty good. Good poutine. It, it was a smoked meat poutine. How can you go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bed and breakfast that we stayed at, the lady, well, her and her husband, they cooked all our meals for us too. And they had like, they grew all their own vegetables and plants and flowers of the edible sort, so yeah. that was all included. And I would hope they're edible. <laughs> well, yes, of course. But I, that's not something that I do. So You're it right. Was, <laughs> it was it was interesting for me. Yeah. All right. I think that's uh, we've taken up enough of your time today. Uh, we hope you're having a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. You bet. Oh. Still missed the garbage can. Yeah. Don't forget about us. <laughs>